Hi, welcome to Japan by Food. I'm your host, Shizuka Anderson. I hope you guys have been enjoying our Osaka videos. Today I am in Osaka again at the Kurumo Ichiba Marketplace today. This is located in the Nipponbashi area of Osaka. It actually dates all the way back to the year 1902 when this marketplace was first established, but apparently fish traders were actually selling their fish here since the 19th century. So this marketplace goes way, way back. And this marketplace actually goes all the way down 580 meters. And even today, you can buy fresh seafood and fresh fish. So it really stays true to its historical roots. But in addition to that, you get lots of delicious to-go goodies and traditional foods. So I'm gonna go see what I can discover here today. Let's go. During pre-COVID times, it was said that about 23,000 people would visit this shopping street every single day. So if you can imagine, two years ago, this street would have been jam-packed every day. Um, but at least the good part about it right now is that we can kind of peacefully walk through here. But hopefully with another year or so, things will be back to its regular hustle and bustle. There's even a seafood shop here. It looks like they sell sushi or sashimi. Oh, this looks really delicious. Look at these delicious seafood bowls that they have. I don't think I'm gonna get a whole bowl today, but I'd love to try a little bit of their sashimi. I think I'm gonna try their aburi toro. Aburi means like lightly seared on a grill, so it gets really, really melty and delicious. I love it so much. I'm gonna get one of those. And maybe a classic otoro fatty tuna slice of sashimi. Let's try it. Oh my goodness, look at this plate. Not only does the plate look gorgeous with its little flakes of gold, the tuna just looks so tantalizing. I cannot wait to eat this. I'm gonna start with the fatty tuna. Oh, that just that looks so good already. Glorious strips of fat in between. Our nice soy sauce dip. Oh my goodness. And since it's an otoro, it is extremely fatty, but it is called fatty tuna. And it really does melt in your mouth. You hardly have to chew it, it just disappears. So good. And there's a nice little touch of wasabi hidden in there. Now I'd love to try my seared tuna. I really, I can't express how much I love seared sushi. Itadakimasu. Mm, I could eat these all day, oh my goodness. Since it's been seared, it's so juicy. There's a little bit of crispness to the edges where it's been really seared by the blowtorch. And then of course, finish it off with that wasabi to give it that kick. I'm gonna have my last bite and then let's keep exploring. Mm. Lots of fresh seafood, even flowers. この店でいつ頃からやられてるんですか。もうやってんな。この今日ちょっと食べてみるのにおすすめのってどっち。絶対そっち。こっち、あ、じゃあぜひじゃこっちを一つお願いします。すごいプロですね。やっぱり。So <笑> this is how it turns out after he um he opens it up and cleans it out a little bit. お、あ、ありがとうございます。Very <笑> very fresh sweet uni straight from Hokkaido. When you leave it in the shell, 
the meat actually kind of starts to melt naturally. Well, they actually put an additive into it that keeps the meat firm. But this actually adds a little bit of bitterness you might associate with sea urchin. So if you eat it fresh out of the shell like this, apparently it's just very sweet. You don't get any bitterness is what he said. So I'm looking forward to trying it and seeing how different it is from um, sea urchin at a sushi shop. Itadakimasu. Holy cow, oh my gosh. It is gone. It's like melty or half melted butter. It disappears in your mouth instantaneously. That was incredible. And in addition to that, it is not bitter at all. True to his words, it is actually quite sweet. I'm getting the pro advice here. So what you're supposed to do, mix your wasabi and soy sauce together. Add just a little bit on top so you get some flavor. Here we go. That is very nice. Oh, it, it all depends on just how you want to enjoy this. But if you, you get a little bit more of that sushi shop taste when you eat it like this. Now let's try it wrapped in some seaweed. Probably gonna dip just a little bit uh, at the bottom in some soy sauce and wasabi. Here we go, itadakimasu. That's a really good too. Um, it definitely tastes a lot more like your sushi roll because you get the saltiness and the umami of the seaweed and it is so, so good. Definitely worth a try if you guys come here. I 100% recommend this. Mm. Well, let's keep exploring you guys. I'm gonna finish up my sea urchin. Here's another retro looking shop. It's called Ishibashi Shokuhin. Apparently the shop has been open for about 50 years and I think it is a family run business. And you, as you can see, they have a whole bunch of different dishes that you can buy. That looks really good. It's a lenkon hasami age. I'm gonna get one of those. Ooh, here we go. I decided to get the lenkon hasami age. Lenkon is the lotus root and hasami means to sandwich something. So on the inside there's actually meat and then they've deep fried it. And it's inside this delicious looking gooey sauce and it's covered in green onions. Oh, it's dripping off. Here we go, itadakimasu. That's really delicious. You can see inside it's got some meat cooked inside. I think it might be pork. And you get this delicious crunch of the lotus root and then you get the additional crispness of the green onions on top. That's all really tasty. The sauce is, um, it's been thickened with cornstarch, so it gets really gooey like this, which is quite common in, I think, Chinese dishes. But you can also find this in Japan as well. It's a little bit salty, but mainly on the sweeter side. Well, I'm gonna finish up this meal. Starting to slowly get full, but Let's see what else we can find. Mm, well, I've just finished eating my food here, but actually the next place I wanted to visit is right across the hall. This is the chicken shop Maruchiku, and all of the chicken here is actually free range, and they're very well known for their fried chicken, or karaage. So I'm gonna give this a try. Karaage o hitatsu, onegaishimasu. Okime no de, onegaishimasu. Here we go, we've got our giant karage. It's not very often you see a fried chicken piece <laughs> this big. You can't really go wrong with karage. I have to say the flavor in the sauce is not very strong. Very light tasting batter. Uh, it is not straight out of the fryer, so it's not hot. I would love to eat a nice hot crispy piece of chicken, but flavor wise and like size wise, this is really worth it. It's very good. Mmm. I have a fun fact for you guys. Did you guys know that this marketplace actually used to have a different name? It used to be called the Emmyoji Marketplace or Emmyoji Ichiba because it was named after a temple nearby called Emmyoji Temple. It actually got the nickname of Kuromo Ichiba because the temple gates in front of that temple were painted black and Kuromo means black gate. But unfortunately, in the year 1912, the temple burnt down due to a huge fire. And ever since then, this marketplace just ended up being called Kuromo Ichiba. Well, I've tried quite a few different foods today, so I think I'd like to have a little sit down at this traditional Japanese sweet shop called Chidoriya. Chidoriya is a shop that started in the Kyushu area of Japan. 
and now they have a lot of different locations all around the Kansai region, but you cannot get it in the Kanto region, which is where Tokyo is. So if you're looking for some delicious wagashi sweets, this is a good place to stop by. So apparently their most famous item here is the chidori manju. That looks really tasty. You can even see a, a food sample of it right here. They're made out of silicone and plastic, but they look very real. If you're interested, we did do a video about that, so you can probably find the link somewhere. All right, now I'm gonna try this chidori manju. Let's try the one with the little, where you can see the little birdie on it. Ooh, here we go. That looks really nice. I'm actually surprised. It looks different from manjus I'm used to. Normally there's like red bean paste on the inside. Even when it's white bean paste, it usually has a little bit more of a translucent look to it. This one is like very, very white. Let's dig in. Itadakimasu. The exterior is less mochi-like and more similar to a bread, even. And the inside is a really dense, probably type of white bean paste. It's really tasty. It's a little bit on the sweeter side, so you're definitely gonna need a sip of tea to go with it. All right, and my last stop for today at Kuromo Ichiba is Takahashi Shokuhin's tofu shop. And this tofu shop, if you can see, has been running for 98 years, it says on the sign. So this is a very old family-run shop, as you can see. But what they're famous for is their silken and their firm tofus. They have a lot of different tofu products, which all look amazing. And they also have something that is, I think is very special, is you can get fresh soy milk. Apparently what's unique about it is that they use a very special mineral water, and it's apparently very, very thick. Amazingly, one cup, an L-sized cup, is only a dollar or a hundred yen. So <laughs> let's get one of those. Tonyu no L-size is one and then the Tonyu donuts are also very delicious. Yes, please. Wow, it's amazing. 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 I think this is a fun way to wrap up the day. A fresh cup of soy milk, which I've never had out of a machine like this before, and some soy milk donuts because I just saw these and they look really good. So let's give these a try. And it, apparently this is the creamiest, thickest soy milk that you can get in Osaka. So, itadakimasu. Mmm, that is refreshing. It's very nice and cold, perfect for a hot day like today. And you can really enjoy the flavor of the soybeans. Apparently they use some very special, high quality soybeans, so you can really enjoy that taste. And in addition to that, it's just creamy, very thick. It's really nice. Take a look at these soy milk donuts. Soy milk donuts are actually pretty popular in Japan. So let's see how much different the taste is when it comes from a tofu shop. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, that's yummy. The taste is a lot more like a cake, like a really dense cake, rather than a donut that you're traditionally used to. And you can enjoy this light, milky flavor that comes from the soy milk, and it's dusted with some sugar, powdered sugar. Yeah, that's a nice combination. Really good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed joining me on my stroll down the Kuromo Ichiba Marketplace. This has been a really, really fun day eating so much delicious food. This, I think one of the things that I loved most about this marketplace is just the friendliness and the hospitality of all of the shopkeepers here. You can really feel their passion and the warmth that they give their customers. Hopefully everything will be much more open when you come since after next year. And if you're interested, we also have a tour at buyfood.com down below in the links. So you can even come join a fun tour here as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'd love to hear what your favorite food was that I tried today and let me know those in the comments down below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Bye.